journey, friends. <laughs> Good morning. We're just a week out from Easter, and I hope everyone's got all their crocheting done. And um, yeah, it's a gorgeous day here. It's windy, but we're going to have fun anyway, right? <laughs> so let's grab our cup or whatever you're drinking today, and let's clinkity, clink, clink, clink. <laughs> Last week, I talked about my straw, and I forgot to grab my straw off the counter this morning, so no straw. <laughs> All righty, let me move my coffee cup so I don't knock it over. The first thing I wanted to show you is, remember last week I talked about the coffee jelly beans? Well, they're super good, quite sweet. If you like a little coffee or a little sugar with your coffee, you'll like those jelly beans. But we were in Safeway this week, and I found... Donut Shop Coffee Peeps. <laughs> Talk about an explosion of sugar. I haven't tried them yet. I'll let you know. But I thought I'd tell you about them because they're fun. <laughs> and we got to have a little fun in our life right now, right? Okay, so what we're going to do today is I've had a lot of questions about how do I deal with my leftover yarns? How do I store them? Where do I put them? And things like that. So I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, not actually spin one or roll one up, but I'm going to show you what I do with it, how I do it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, I'm going to call this step one in learning how to read a crochet pattern. And we're going to go through a couple of things in the next couple of weeks that are going to help us do better at reading patterns. And I, I think it's really important just to get an understanding of how to read patterns a little bit because there's tons of patterns out there that there aren't videos for or maybe don't have pictures. And they're great patterns. They just don't have all that extra stuff. And I don't want you to miss out on those if you want to, you know, want to make them. All right. And so we're going to do that a little bit. We're going to start today and we're going to do this a little bit through the next couple of weeks. Just, I call it uncoding or decoding crochet patterns. And it's, it's an interesting thing because patterns have changed and evolved through the years. Patterns that I learned off of, like back when I was extremely young, back in, you know, I was born in the 60s. So, <laughs> and I started crocheting when I was 13, 12 or 13. Um, and so, Patterns have changed since then, and and another thing is every pattern designer stitches differently, writes differently, uses different terms, and things like that. And I'm just going to just go through some of those things to kind of make it easier for you to understand how to read patterns. And then we'll talk about what we did this week and a few things that are coming up, okay? That's just a quick overview. All right, so... How do I store my crochet leftover, not crochet, but leftover yarns? And I have that big basket, but I want to show you this. This is an inexpensive yarn winder. It works really good. I hook it to my kitchen counter and I deal with my leftover yarns. This was a gift that someone gave to me. It was sent to me from Amazon. Um... You know, I don't even see a brand name on here. So I don't know the brand name, but it, it, it's a hand winding one. I um, They have ones that, you, that are electric. They have bigger ones. And something that I learned about this one, if you have one like this, it doesn't wind a great big um, cake. They wind into cakes. I'll show you that in just a second. But if you want to make it bigger, take a paper plate and tape it down because as it spins, if you don't tape it down, the paper plate will lift. And you can make your cakes even bigger. Okay? Just a little thing I kind of do on my own that I learned. Okay? Now, I have a video out there. I'm going to set this right down here on the floor. Uh, someone said to me the other day, you ought to make a video of how you do that. And I said, I have. <laughs> and so there is a video out there. I think the video is called How to Make Cakes, Yarn Cakes, or something like that. And on the video, I show you how I wind it up and everything and then I also show you on that video how to use um, uh, toilet paper rolls if you don't have a winder of your own and how to wind them up into multicolored cakes or solid cakes okay I'll put I didn't put that link down there I'll add that link underneath the video in that description box so you can find that link to that video okay but let me show you 
real quick. This is one of those big wicker baskets. And I wind them up into cakes. And you can see they're not all solids. Some of them are variegated. And, um, so, and I just finished doing this one up as far as this. Because what I do is about once a month or so, I will wind up all my extra cakes and throw them together. And, I mean, this basket is loaded. <laughs> and you can see there's lots of colors. Some that are, like, see that green one in the front there with the gray? I'll put some colors together that I think might work well together. Variegated solids. And then when I go to do a project, I'm ready to go. And a nice thing, let me set that down, about winding a cake like this, here's a cake, is you can go right in the center and pull out that center pole. Cakes are one of the things that I just love. Um, usually they're easy, <laughs> you know. But anyway, I I love using a cake, and if I and but I do not wind, as you can tell behind me, all of my skeins of yarn into cakes. I don't do that. I just do my leftovers. If I have a half of a cake, sorry, if I have a half of a skein of yarn or half, maybe half of a cake, like some of those big ones behind me, I will roll it into smaller ones just to make it so I can use it. Then when I'm looking for colors and things, I can grab. And it's also fun to put them all in there together because you can see colors that maybe go together that maybe you hadn't thought would, you know, go together. Okay, and so I wanted to show you that because since we're doing this ha scrap happy <laughs> crochet along this year and trying to get rid of a lot of our yarns that we have on hand, I wanted to show you what I do. It's a really simple process. And... The cake winder that I use, like I said, it was a gift. Someone sent it to me off Amazon in a gift exchange that I did probably six or seven years ago. Okay, I don't, I don't know what they cost. You can check that for yourself. And it's just, I think it's called a manual cake, yarn cake winder. Okay, but I love it. I use it all the time. And um, sometimes I stand at my counter and I do my steps and just kind of walk as I'm doing it and kind of wind, and I can get a little exercise that way too. So, you know, and then I have them all together in this big basket. And I also try to rotate them in the basket, you know, move them around. So, um, if you don't have a winder, like I was saying on that video, I'll show you what you can do using a toilet paper roll to kind of make a winding a, a cake of yarn so that you can mix your colors together and keep them um, together without just having strings of yarn everywhere which you know that can get away from us and then if you get if you're like me if you if you get to the bottom of like a basket or something and you've got a bunch of strings of yarn left over you don't want to deal with them and so Unfortunately, a lot of times I'll toss them out because I just don't want to deal with them. So if you wind them up, even if you don't have a winder, you can do this just winding them into balls of yarn and putting them in a basket to keep them separate. Now, I don't use any kind of clips to, um, to keep them together. All I do is when I get, get it done, I just take it and tuck it under just like that. And they stay. I've never had any problem with them coming undone. And you can do the same thing with the ball of yarn. Okay, but I wanted to talk about that because I have gotten lots of questions about it. Um, I have a basket sitting right over here, you know, by my work area. I have a basket also that has some balls of yarn in it that I need to wind. And so it's kind of a process for me, just something that I do, you know, each about once a month or so. All right, so don't panic if you don't have a winder, but they're really inexpensive. If you have a birthday coming up or Christmas or anniversary, ask for one. I, I'm sure they're not that expensive. Like I said, I've never bought one but because this one was a gift. All right, but I just wanted to deal with that. Now, let's talk a little bit about reading patterns. I have a pattern here. This is for our, um, our spring bunny. You can see I spilled a little coffee on it. Ignore that. But we're going to deal with these this portion of a pattern because in reality you cannot work the rest of the pattern if you've not read through and understand all of this stuff all right so let's take each one separately okay so we have the title of course spring bunny pot holder and we're going to show i'm going to show you that in a little bit and then we have a skill level 
The skill level for crochet patterns goes from beginner to easy to intermediate and to experienced. I add an extra one in between easy and intermediate and intermediate and I call it moderate. And that means it's not an intermediate pattern, but it's not an easy pattern either. Either It's kind of in between. That's something I do. It's good to know because not very, other crochet designers don't do that. One thing that's misunderstood here a lot is people think that when it says easy, it's a beginner pattern, and it's not. A beginner pattern is even easier than an easy. So the first level is beginner basic stitches. Then you go to easy, you get into a little bit more things. And then as you progress through from easy to intermediate to experienced, the patterns of course get harder. And that's something that's very important to understand. I get questions all the time about, um, you said this was easy, but it's not a beginner and it's not. Beginner is different. It's less hard as easy. So it goes beginner, easy, intermediate and experienced. And again, I put that moderate in between the easy and the intermediate. Okay. So that's the first thing you need to understand. The next thing is important because it's the materials used for the pattern. The crochet hook. If you don't use the same size crochet hook, you probably won't get the same results. All right. Now, everybody crochets differently. Some people crochet tighter, some people crochet looser. So keep that in mind when you're working on a pattern. Okay, so the next thing is the yarn. This says medium four. Well, what if you use a bulky five? It's not going to work the same. Or what if you use a um, thin three, which is your light? It's not going to work the same. And so I get questions all the time. I'm working on your pattern. Your pattern says H, I used a J. Your pattern says medium four, and I used a different cotton or, or a different yarn, and it's not coming out. Well, you've answered your own question because you're using a different crochet hook and a different yarn, okay? And so those are important. Um, I list a needle because you're almost always going to need a needle for weaving in your ends. Now, another thing is... On this list of materials, it may say beads, stuffing, metal rings, plastic hooks. Those are all things you're going to need to complete that pattern. Sometimes I'll put optional, like buttons are optional or flowers are optional. And that's something you don't have to do, but it's there if you want it to look like the pattern as it's made. Okay, so we have skill level and materials. They're very important. The next thing is stitches. And usually you're going to have stitches, terms, and abbreviations. And the abbreviations are real important to go over, if, especially if there might be something in there you don't know how to do. If you see something in there you don't know how to do, go ahead and Google it. It'll be there somewhere. If there's a stitch that maybe I want done a certain way, say a V-stitch, and a regular V-stitch is a double crochet, chain one double crochet, in the same stitch or space. But maybe I want it to be a double V-stitch where you stitch two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. And I will list that there. Um, I might put double V-stitch and then the parentheses, you know, DB, uh, VST for the abbreviation. And then I might put next to it what that actually is. A lot of designers would do that or they'll, or they'll be underneath here, it'll say special stitches. Always read through that because it'll explain what the special stitch is or maybe a link to a video or an explanation. One thing I really like to use is what's called Crochet for Dummies. Don't be offended. It's a great book. It's called Crochet for Dummies because it's super easy. And if you can't find a um, particular stitch or pattern, Google Crochet for Dummies and the Stitch. They have lots of really great pictures. If you're one that likes to see pictures, they have great pictures and it will help you understand. Okay, now the next thing is size. Sometimes, like this one, it says 8.5 inches and that's how big your chick pot holder should be. Now, if you make it and it's 9 inches, it's not the end of the world. And if you make it and it's only 8 inches, it's not the end of the world. That just means you stitch either looser or tighter than I did for the stitch. 
when this is super important is when you're making, say, a hat or a top or something that needs to be an exact size. That's where you can adjust your hook up or down a, a size or two to make sure you're on point with the sizing, okay? Now, underneath this sizing also, or this size uh, portion also, you'll find if the pattern has multiples. And we've talked about multiples in the past, and those will be listed there. There'll also be things like two chains equal four inches or something. I mean, that's ridiculous, but <laughs> four chains may be equal two inches. Those things will be under there. It'll also say if two rows equal three inches or something like that. Those things will be under there, and those are super helpful when you're making a blanket or something where it needs to be right on. But a lot of things like blankets or hot pad, things like that, if you're off by a half of an inch in a lot of these things, it's not that big of a deal unless it's something that needs to fit. And also remember, when you're working with the size, yarn is super stretchy. And so it may be big or small and different yarns are stretchy different. So keep that in mind if you're using a different, say a different brand, okay? Um, and those, and that is super duper important. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about here is notes. Most patterns will have notes and these are important. They're things that are there that you need to know to work the pattern. Like this, chain three counts as a double crochet. When you're joining or turning, a lot of times that chain three will count as a double crochet. Sometimes it'll say chain one does not count as a double crochet. You'll get your stitch counts off if you count that chain one as a stitch. Usually chain one, if it is counted, it's counted as a slip stitch or a single crochet. Chain three is usually counted as a double crochet, but depending on the stitch pattern, it may not. Another thing you'll find there is rounds are joined to the chain three. It tells you where to join your rounds with a slip stitch, how to join your rounds. And then this one says, unless indicated otherwise. And that means there might be a time or two where the pattern will tell you that the chain three doesn't count or you don't join a certain way, okay? And a lot of times I get questions about these things um, because they didn't read the notes. One thing I also wanted to tell you is back up here where it lists the materials, it'll have a C1 and a C2. Those are color one and color two. Your first color on this one is pink. So when the pattern says with color one, it's talking about the pink yarn. When the pattern says color two, it's talking about the white yarn. All right, so. I was looking to see if there was a question. I, I guess there's not. Okay, so when you're working a pattern, before you even begin the pattern, read through those five things. Make sure you know exactly the level. Make sure you know exactly the materials that you need, especially the hook and the yarn size. And then stitches. If there are stitches you don't know what they are, look them up. If there is anything you don't understand, uh, multiples or any of that, Google is your friend. <laughs> there are tons of sites that can give you this information. Okay. And by reading through these five things, give me two seconds. <clears throat> My throat got dry from talking too much because I like to talk. If there's anything that you don't understand on here, it's going to cause you frustration. Well, what does that mean? I don't know what C1 means. I don't know what a double V stitch is or a triple cluster or whatever. If the pattern doesn't tell you, I try to give you tons of information, but if the pattern doesn't tell you, look it up. And when all else fails, contact the pattern designer of that pattern. There's a lot of pattern designers that um, because they feel like they're experienced, they forget that you're not, and I never say that I'm an experienced crocheter because I feel like that crochet is an ever-growing art. It's constantly changing, and there's always lots of fun new things to learn in crochet. If I'm not learning something all the time, then I, then I get bored with it, and I have never, as long as I can live, 
I've been crocheting since I was like 12, 13, 14. I have never gotten bored with it because I'm constantly learning new things. And that's how crochet is. Patterns are the same way. People have learned that um, wording and things like that are harder for some than others. And we, I mean, think about different parts of even here in America where we all have different kinds of accents. You know, I would not want to be an English teacher like in Boston compared to in Texas because our accents are all different. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's amazing and wonderful, but it can cause issues even with a pattern because we speak things differently and we say things differently and we understand things differently. And that's why with my patterns, now I didn't used to do this, but what I do now in the last, you know, four or five years is when I write out a pattern, I try to read it out loud and see if I understand it before I even send it to the testers. And I try to do as many pictures as possible to help you understand what I'm saying. And then we do a video. And, you know, some people, and I say this all the time, some people can get it without a video or a photo. Some people like me, we like to see things, and so I like to have pictures. And then there are those that like to see it happen. That's me too. <laughs> and so we do videos, and those are just helps for you. I think the more that you watch a video and look at the pictures, the less frustrated you're going to be. And I don't want anybody to be frustrated with crochet. I don't. I, I really, really don't, because I want you to love it as much as I do. I want you to love creating things and making things to me the, the the funnest thing is when I learn a new step or project and I can make it and then I give it to someone and the, and you know a lot of times people don't, don't get frustrated with this but a lot of people sometimes don't understand the amount of work and love and creativity that goes into making something when you give it to them I mean think about this just as an example, your friend's getting ready to have a baby or a loved one's getting ready to have a baby and you want to make them a beautiful blanket for that baby. Okay, so you think about your friend, your loved one. You pick out the yarn. You get online and you find a pattern. And then you sit down and you make that pattern. And a baby blanket, more times than not, it's going to take quite a few hours to make. And you finish it. Oh, there might be a mistake or two in there, but they'll never see that. <laughs> Or you frog the whole thing and, and start it over and all the time and effort and love that goes into making that baby blanket. And then you get to give that to them. And maybe they don't understand the amount of time and effort and love that goes into it, but you do. Okay? So, don't get frustrated. If there's something you don't understand in the pattern, make sure you read through those first five things and understand that first. And if there's something you don't understand, contact the crochet designer or just Google it and you'll probably find your answer. Another thing to remember is crochet has changed through the years. Terms have changed. People have renamed patterns hundreds of times and it might, you might be searching for one pattern and it comes up with another one. You know, so don't let that frustrate you either because that's part of the process of an art that is constantly changing. So I thought I saw a question. Let me glance through here real quick. Yes, Kim says the English language is the hardest to teach. It is. It absolutely is because we have so many what they call exceptions that prove the rule. <laughs> You know, I was I was having this exact conversation with my granddaughter over the word circle because it can it, it, it if you were to follow the rules, it would not be pronounced circle. It would be kirkle, <laughs> you know, and sometimes C is soft. Sometimes it's hard. So is it kersel, kirkle, sersel, <laughs> you know, and I was having this conversation with my 10 year old daughter because she loves to read, but she hates vocabulary. So anyway, it's true. The English language is a hard language. Okay, I don't see any more questions on that. Now, feel free <clears throat> to send me an email and ask a question. Um, and I say my my email address is, um, you can find the webpage in the notes underneath this video. And the reason I say uh, to contact me through there, for some reason, with all the changes on Facebook and Instagram 
and all this other stuff. I'm just not getting messages other places. And they go so many places. I get them on Ravelry. Those I can get to without any problem. They're usually pretty basic and I can help with those. But it's also difficult if you have a question that requires a long answer. Um, if, you, if you comment on uh, the YouTube channel, uh, I'm going to tell you email me because it's a lot easier that way because then I can send pictures back and forth and we can have a conversation that way a lot better. So if you ever have a question about one of my patterns or one of my videos or you want to send me a picture of something that you made or whatever, uh, go to the website link underneath the video. On that website, there's a contact tab. Just hit that contact tab and it will shoot me an uh, email. Now, some of the pictures don't come through, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's your servers or mine, but so keep that in mind. But really, if you want to show a picture, go to the PPD Puppy Love Crochet Group on Facebook. I love seeing your pictures. You can go there and post a picture there once you join the group. And it's really important when you join that group that you answer those three questions because that tells me you're interested in what we're interested in in the group, which is crochet, <laughs> you know, and yarn. Okay, so let's talk about what happened this week at Posh Pooch Designs. The first thing we did is we made the bunny pot holder. And here's just a ba the basic pink one. And I showed you on the video how to make two, how to put them together. And you can make this into a thicker hot pad by making two and putting them together. Or you can make it into a really cute bunny plushy or stuffy. And you can do that with the chick and the lamb as well. Just make two. The last row, stitch them together. You can either just have a thick hot pad or pot holder, or you can make a stuffy. And you can make these out of cotton or out of acrylic. Super cute and super fun for the holiday of Easter, which is this next Sunday. Um, super cute for spring. They don't have to just be for Easter. They can be for spring as well. And like I said, if you want to make them out of cotton and you want to be super thick, make two of the circles, then do that last row stitching them together. And you would do the same thing if you want to make it into a little stuffy. Just stuff it and then finish closing it. And you can find this on Ravelry. You can find it on my blog and you can find that link for the video down in the notes under this video. The other thing we did, I'm going to go over to my roaming camera here that roams around the room sometimes and show you these. This is what we did on Friday. We did a quick walk through my dirty garden area and how I cleaned it up to get it ready for planting. And then we also, I uh, showed you my palette that I made, my palette sign. And then we made these. They're called whirly jigs. And they're similar to the fidget spinners, but they don't stand out as much. And I used to make these when I was first learning to crochet. There was a lady in our church when I was a kiddo, and she was great at crafts. And I was telling her about how I wanted to learn to make a curl. And so she told me to use two strands of acrylic yarn. And I can't remember the hook size, but, um, um, and she showed me how to make similar to these. And I made tons of them. Back then, I used to go to Kmart and buy their Kmart inexpensive acrylic yarns. They were stiff and scratchy, but they were great for fidget spinners. And we would just sit there and talk and make bunches of these. And then I'd hang them all over. We had a, we had a chain link fence, and I'd hang them all over the chain link fence so they would move in the wind. It was a lot of fun. It was one of the first things that I did learn to crochet besides, you know, a single crochet and a double crochet. My hair is steady clean and it keeps sticking to my neck. Anyway, but um, we did those. They're super fun. The neat thing about them is if you hang them in your garden, the movement will scare away the birds. And someone asked me if it would keep the squirrels away from their bird feeder, but I'm afraid it might keep the birds away from your bird feeder also because of the movement. So you don't want to put them too close if, you're, if you've got bird feeders or a bird bath or something like that. They don't bother the bees. The bees don't care. I've had bees land on them. They don't care. And um, so don't worry about the bees getting swished off. I wish they would get rid of the caterpillars. They won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, for Friday fun this week, since we still have below zero temperatures at night, I can't take my plants out. I'll show you what, I thought I'd walk you into my little 
it's my, actually my dining room and my family room and <laughs> my kitchen <laughs> full of my plants. I don't have a greenhouse. I wish I did. And I'll kind of walk, show you what I'm going to put out there when I finally get to. And then also we're going to make a new um, cover for our pots. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Super fun. I did some in the past, but they're all worn out. They're several years old, so I'm going to make some new ones. And we're going to use cotton yarn this week, just to kind of give you a heads up, just your basic. And get in your yarn stash and find your scratchiest, toughest cotton yarn. That's what you want to use for these so they hold up in the weather. Okay? So we're going to do that on Friday. And you don't have to just use them for outside. If you have potted plants in the house like I do, they're nice because they can add a, a pop of color also. All right, so that's what we're going to do on Friday. And then yesterday... <laughs> We did the uh, spring flower baby bonnets. They're super cute. Um, the pattern has four sizes. It has preemie, which is this one. And the preemie one will fit your American Girl 18-inch style dolls. And then this is the newborn size on my little doll. <laughs> I'll talk about that in just a second. And, the, and then there's also a three-month size and a six-month size. And this is the same flower that we've been using on our spring pot holders. I thought it was just adorable. I think it would look really pretty all in one color as well. I love the little curls. And um, I like this because you can put it on your baby. Let me show you on this one. You can put it on the baby and just... You don't have to tie a knot. You just flip those over. And it'll keep that on the baby without having it tight because of those curls. I just love the flowers on the white. And the yellow one's pretty too. And the thing is, this will work great for baby boys too. Just if you don't want to put flowers on it, don't put flowers. And you can do any colors you want. And it does have two rows of single crochet around here. You could always change that color. These make great baby gifts also. All right, now I'm going to ask you to go look at this video. For some reason, they think I have a real baby on there that without her clothes. This is a doll that I bought. She's canvas. And she, she's made so that you can like embroider her face on or not. And she's about the, a little bit bigger than an American Girl doll. And she's perfect for modeling baby clothes. And that's why I bought her. I didn't want to put her in a dress or an outfit because I wanted the bonnet to be the star of the show. So... Because of that, I'm not getting it pushed out by YouTube. And so I really need you all to go look at this pattern. Give it a like on YouTube. For some reason, they think I used a real baby without her clothes. And I didn't. <laughs> you can see she's a doll. <laughs> so anyway, I love that pattern. And I think from now on when I... Because the thing about it, it takes very little yarn. And if you made someone a baby blanket or baby outfit or dress or one of those uh, bunting things or whatever, you, and you've got yarn left, you can always add a button, uh, a bonnet because they're, they're open and lacy and you can, they're great for spring, summer, and they're even good for winter and fall. And um, they're just pretty and they make a great photo prop. If you want to take a picture of your baby in a bonnet, that'd be the perfect little bonnet to do that. And again, please go like that pattern on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not offended. I'm not upset. It's just funny to me. So anyway, <clears throat> I, um, a, a few years ago, a friend of mine named Debbie, she also has, I think it's Debbie Dearest. She also has a YouTube channel and she did this thing called bringing back the bonnet because she felt like nobody was putting baby bonnets on their babies anymore. And I love baby bonnets. I think it's, they're wonderful for pictures and, um, you know, these would be super fun to make for all the kids in your family and take a family Easter picture, you know. So anyway, I love baby bonnets. I'm old fashioned. I tell people this all the time. They'll ask me, well, why do you do your crochet the way that you do? I'm like, I'm old school. I do it the old fashioned way. And not that the new ways aren't great. They are. I'm just old school. I learned the old fashioned way. And I told this one lady I'm going to be 60 next year. And she's like, um... I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I am. I just had my birthday in February. I turned 59. My husband's going to be 60 in August, and my daughter's going to be 40 in August. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. I, um, I told my daughter the other day, I said, 
I don't mind getting older, but it's watching you grow up and get older that's hard on me, you know. My son's birthday is in May. And so, um, actually, the next two birthdays, Callie will be 13 in May. My granddaughter, y'all have seen her on here from time to time. And um, my uh, son. And then, um, let's see, Aiden, my grandson, is 14. And then my granddaughter, Zoe, that lives here, will be 10. So my grandkids are all growing up fast, too. Time flies fast. you got to enjoy every single moment of it. Every single moment. Even the hard moments, even the tough moments, the ones that don't necessarily bring us joy, we can still find snatches of joy in our crochet. I tell people this all the time. When I'm stressed, when things are heavy, when things are hard, when you struggle, grab a skein of yarn and just make something because I'm telling you, it will release your tension. And I'm not a doctor, like I say, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a, um, I don't know what all the terms are, but I'm not. I'm just telling you, for me, crochet is healing and calming, brings me peace. And it gives me time also to think. You know, I, I, although there are times when I just turn on, you know, a uh, Hallmark movie or or some sitcom or something, and I just let it run, and I just think about what I'm making, and I, and I can and I can release that anxiety a little bit, you know, because the truth of the matter is, I told this to my niece the other day. I said, "Life is hard. It is, and it's up to us how we handle it." You know, and sometimes it's hard to get through things: death of a loved one, or loved one sick, or someone that we care about hurting, and things, and we we want to be there for them. And those things are hard, you know. But, like I say, we got to grab those little snatches of joy where we can. And remember, it's okay to laugh and have fun. Hug the people you love and smile. And you know what? <clears throat> I've learned <laughs> going out into the world shopping and, and doing different things that there's a lot of hurting people out there. And if you can just give them a smile, find something to give them a compliment, compliment about, tell them their, their hair's prettier, their shirt's nice, or... You know, I don't know, just ha tell them to have a nice smile or something, you know. Just bring a little joy to others. It will bring joy to yourself as well. Okay? So, <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox and quit preaching for a minute here. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I just have a wonderful, wonderful Easter. And if you don't celebrate Easter, have a wonderful spring. And um, go out into the world and uh, enjoy the sunshine and during the days it's sunshiny here, so I'm hoping within a couple of weeks I'll be able to start planting because I love gardening. That's my other passion. And so anyway, I will see you all next week and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye now. <laughs>